I'll dispense with the levity and commence with the brevity. This week we're looking at the RF-70. This is the most premium Instax wide shooter ever produced. The creme de la creme of Mint Camera's original creations. And it is without further ado that I bring to you this review. I don't know, is that good? Like, do we like that when I'm rhyming like that? Does anybody want that? The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben and I am positively riptide rushed because today we're finally checking out a camera that I've discussed many times on the show. Probably one of the most requested reviews, the Mint Instant Con RF70. This is an absolutely luscious, high-end instant photography tool. There's absolutely nothing else like it besides the SF70, their Instax Square version. And boy, am I lucky to have friends who trust me with their cameras. Major, major shout out to In An Instant Hall of Famer Yamin for sending this over. He is one of my favorite photographers and he reached out with the offer. I said, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd like that very much, sir. And here we are, sir. The Instant Con RF70 dropped in mid-2018, released by Mint Camera, who you may be familiar with from the TL70, which I also reviewed, their flash bar for the SX70s, or their souped up fully manual modded SX70 cameras called the SLR670. Mint Camera is a small business and the fact that they've been able to churn out these beautiful products is in itself a major, major accomplishment. One of the initial reasons that the RF70 draws a lot of lusting, thirsty eyes, you thirsty freaks, is that it is filling a massive hole in the industry. Fuji notoriously does not and will not produce higher end camera bodies for the wide format or any format. They make point and shoots. It makes some people very mad. On only some of their cameras can you even turn off the flash. Maybe you get a 10 second timer, but that's it, very limited. The Lomo Instant Wide does add more flexibility, but there was still basically no camera in any format that could compare to let's say, the SX70 in its form factor and premium design. Like the SX70, the RF70 has a fold-out bellow structure that resembles many vintage medium format bodies. I was really curious as a top of the line product what this whole thing would feel like and I'm happy to report it feels really friggin' good. It feels expensive, it's plastic, but like the good, nice kind of plastic. Uh, aside from how it looks and feels, there are three major features on this camera that are its lens, its rangefinder focusing, and its manual settings. And because I'm very nice, because I love you, I'll discuss each one of those right now. The Mintopic aspherical lens offers f5.6 to 22 apertures. It is a three element lens with the front element being glass. f5.6 is nuts to have, especially with the 800 ISO film. That's a lot of light. For comparison, the maximum aperture on the SX70 is f8, so you can really soften your background and get easy subject isolation with the RF70. You definitely see some big variation in sharpness through the aperture range. It's obviously very sharp stopped all the way down, but there's undoubtedly a softness wide open at f5.6. At this price point, I maybe would have liked to see more sharpness at that end, but it does ease up the very sterile look of Instax in a pleasing way, I think, which helps it feel a, a bit more like Polaroid kind of and adds character. If you want the Polaroid look, shoot Polaroid. One of the challenges Mint Camera has had to deal with when they produce Instax compatible cameras is that the film itself is locked at 800 ISO, which is a very high speed film. It's great for lower light situations, but in order to use this lens natively in direct sunlight without filters, you pretty much have to use the lens at f22 at its maximum 1 500th of a second shutter speed. The sun is strong like that. It's not fucking around with that light shit. In order to really open that lens up and benefit from what it's truly offering, you have to use their ND filter set and manually meter for your shots. To me, that's not a huge deal because if you're buying this camera, you're getting it because you want that manual control. You know, that's what you're signing up for here, folks. The only slight inconvenience with the filters is that the camera cannot close when they are mounted to the lens. Uh, so you have to keep them on you and put them on every time you wanna take a shot or leave the camera open as you're walking around, which can drain the battery and is a bit precarious. It's a little bit awkward. The lens can't fold back into the body at all, actually, until it's set to infinity. So you rack back to infinity, depress the button on the lens, and it folds back up, which 
does feel really good. One of the huge pluses with the camera is built right into the name, RF, the range finder. There is a separate focusing window from the viewfinder that is punched in and aligns two images once the subject is in focus. This is spectacular because it is arguably easier to guarantee you hit focus with a system like this than doing so manually on any other type of focusing mechanism. So it's sort of similar to like a split image viewfinder on an SLR. You get that tight, tight precision. The viewfinder has frame guides to help with alignment and is expectedly easy to align wide shots. It's very accurate for that. And that's the way I've used this camera predominantly. It's the close-ups that require more mental gymnastics. The guides are there, but it requires a lot of trial and error before you get the hang of it. You will make mistakes. It will be upsetting when you do. You may even cry in the club drinking Simply Apple, but you'll figure it out. I believe in you. I really do. You're doing amazing. Like I said, the manual aspect of this thing is a huge draw. You've got a wheel up here on top uh, on which you can select your shutter speed. You can set it to auto, which is aperture priority. There's two exposure compensation options with auto, bulb mode for long exposures, and flash sync, uh, which it has a convenient port for. It also has an on-camera flash, which is nice. Does a little cute little spring thingy, you know. Even cuter is that the film eject button is designed like a film wind lever, perhaps the most satisfying element of this whole package. I just absolutely love that. Now it's time to talk brass tacks, which is a thing people notoriously love discussing. The cost of this camera is probably the defining reason you will or you won't buy it. It retails at B&H for $769. The filter set, which I think is an absolute necessity, is an additional $100. So we're talking $869 for an instant camera. Trust me, I can hear you through the screen. I know that that may sound preposterous to some of you who are used to instant cameras costing around a hundred bucks max, the, the cost of the filter set. But look, from my perspective, someone who is a photographer and a director that has to buy high-end cameras for work, the fact is nice cameras cost a lot of money. They typically cost thousands of dollars. I'm personally just used to that fact. The SX70, when it was brand new, cost $1,000 adjusted for current inflation. And that was with large scale manufacturing and huge quantities produced. $869 for a small batch high-end manual camera like this is not that ridiculous. And for everyone who has begged Polaroid to produce a new SX70, trust me, if they did, it would cost as much as this or more given that it's an SLR, which is a more complicated design. So I wouldn't neg mint for this price point. It is what it is. If you want this, you pay this. That's all there is to it. I haven't personally purchased this camera because Instax wide is just not my priority and I don't think it would be worth the money for my workflow. But if I did, I'd be on this like white on lice. Rice is what I meant to say. I meant to say rice. I've never had lice. I have no interest in lice at all. I will not give lice a shout out, but I will give rice a shout out. Shout out to rice. Rice is like a great food. It's so flexible. All right, pros and cons, let's go. Pros, fully manual settings finally let you control Instax wide film and lets you shape it the way you want. The wide latitude of the lens helps you shoot at bonkers aperture for that delicious bokeh. And the camera design. The thing is a friggin' art piece. I mean, con. And cons. The maximum shutter speed of 1 500th of a second does not allow you to shoot the camera at most of its available apertures without filters. And the price. Like I said, it is totally justifiable, but will no doubt turn many people away. And the mechanism of using filters. I just wish this camera metered through the lens so that it could be used in auto. Uh, with the filters on it. And I also wish the camera could close with the filters mounted. I just think that would be really nice. Take some of the stress out of it. And that's about it for the RF70. If you have any further questions, I will assume my text-based form and pop right down into the comments to answer them. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and curb stomp that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more views, breakdowns, shoots, guides, and all things instant. Bye.